Hello, I am Ryan Daly, um, and for my assigned student uh, discussions, I was um, assigned the um, Lacan seminar about the polar purloined letter. Um, so we are going to take a look at that. Um, first is just a brief, very brief summary about first the seminar and then about the Pornloin letter itself. So Lacan addresses the Pornloin letter written by Poe. Um, he basically goes into deep analysis um, about signifiers, signs, um, what things mean, everything like that. And the Pornloin letter itself is a short story written by Poe, Edgar Allan Poe, um, and it basically set off this new genre of literature, um, what a lot of people credit it for setting off detective fiction, um, especially modern detective fiction. So um, just a brief summary of the story is an unnamed narrator, we follow him through the story and he solves the case of a stolen important letter by basically outsmarting police. The Poirloin letter Lacan determined that the um, Lacan determined that the signifier is the letter, which makes people um, react in certain ways and take on different roles. So basically, you know, we have the dete our detective who sees this as an opportunity to not only solve the case but he also sees it as a, the letter as a way to get back at his um, sort of enemy in a way at the end of the story and so we have this important figure who sees this letter as a threat to their power and then we have the person who stole the letter who sees this letter as an opportunity to possibly gain money gain power um so the letter itself has a lot of meaning. So this plot really is a, can be seen as a metaphor for how we determine what is what and what signifiers we give to signified things. And um, that's basically what Lacan goes into. A little background on Lacan. He was a French psychoanalyst um, who, some people call the most controversial psycho um, analyst since Freud, um, and he does think a lot about Freud's ideas, um, and he is very um, fam he was very famous in the nineteen hundreds for analyzing text, films, um, and things like that. So Lacan was met with some criticism. One especially was um, French philosopher Derrida. Um, Derrida is very popular for his ideas in um, deep construction and analysis. So um, he, Derrida basically argues that you can't pinpoint a meaning in a text. So you know, it's very hard to analyze writing and it, it's not going to have one meaning. So in a way, um, these two have contradicting points um, because Lacan put, uh, gives meaning to this letter and he gives meaning to the symbols and signs and um, Derrida goes against that saying you can't give one meaning to it. However, they also, in a way, share similarities um, because Lacan um, describes how the letter can have multiple meanings. Um, however, so however, Derrida, Derrida's main point is that you know these meanings are going to change over time. And, uh, you know, everybody's going to read it differently, um, especially over time, um, especially in different circumstances, economic, political, um, you know, through different languages. So you can't give one meaning to an object. Is um, 
One of Lacan's first theories um, or sort of ideas is um, he describes this idea of a child looking into the mirror for the first time and realizing that, you know, that's their body. And he basically describes this as, you know, we see, um, you know, this is a universal experience and the way we we see um, ourselves is a lot different than how we feel and, you know, nobody can really grasp, you know, the, like our body is, say, the, our body is the uh, signal and then our, our inner consciousness is the, no, our body is this, <laughs> Yeah, our body is the signifier, and then our inner consciousness is the signified. And in a way, this mirrors um, a lot of his, the criticism he, he received, because the way in which he wrote, especially in this um, particular seminar, he wrote very poetically. Um, a lot of people describe it as chaotic and, um, you know, hard to read. And these are big ideas that he has, and they're already hard to grasp. And then reading them in a poetic form just adds another layer of difficulty. So that was a huge criticism he received, and I definitely understood that while reading this. Um, so you really have to translate what he's saying from poetry to how you will understand it. And then you have to grasp his ideas on top of that. And this, in a way, I think mirrors how he he describes how the human consciousness is, you know, all over the place, chaotic, um, but, you know, it, it has form and, you know, this form isn't going to grasp exactly what, um, like, everything that it is. Um, but yeah, I think that it's sort of, uh, his, it's funny how his criticism, that the criticism he received in a way reflects one of his big ideas. Khan's seminar can open up a lot of questions for, um, you know, about literature, about movies, TV shows, books, poetry. Um, so some of these questions might include, you know, are we able to, uh, are we able to decide what a certain object in a story means? Are, um, is there only one answer? Is there multiple answers? Um, are there ever any symbols in a, um, in a story? Um, is there a symbol for everything in a story? Um, so a lot of these questions are um you know what people are asking in response to the seminar and it, it's very hard to determine an answer um and this can also uh relate a lot to detective fiction specifically the detective is always looking for answers always looking for hidden meanings and things you know what does this actually mean or what does it mean from somebody else's perspective um, and I think personally that, you know, an object obviously has tons of different meanings from all these different perspectives. And I think that's why Lacan specifically chose this story by Poe is because every character, um, sees the letter as something different and it's a symbol as something for one person that's totally different for another person. And so this story really relates to his um, ideas very well. Noting that in the end of the Purloin letter, the detective is able to solve the case by outsmarting police. He doesn't think for himself. He puts himself sort of in the mind of the minister who stole the letter. And he was thinking of where he would hide the letter if he was actually the minister and this is something that police failed to consider you know police looked in um you know the crevices of the sofa and things like that 
you know, they thought like police, they thought like investigators, but they didn't, they didn't think like the criminal. And this is a, an idea that Lacan describes throughout his whole life is that, um, like I mentioned before, things have different meanings for different people. So the letter made the minister react in a certain way, and that is how the detective was able to solve the case. So to wrap it all up, despite Lacan's um, sometimes frustrating and very confusing wording, um, you know, the poetic wording of his ideas, uh, I think he has very strong points in how we determine how uh, what means what, and especially in the works of literature, and it's important as writers or critics to think about what he's saying and how you might think that one thing is a symbol for something, but uh, another person can think it's a symbol for something else. And, you know, it's hard to determine what it's symbolizing as a fact.